I wasn't thinking about making a video on Hawkeye, because I personally thought that it was simply meh, which is a huge win when compared to all the other Beast Wars shows we've had so far, until I watched the final episode of Hawkeye, and episode 6 was terrible in such ways I could have never expected. So let's just talk about what made it so terrible. First of all, Wilson Fisk. In the final moments just before Hawkeye episode 5 was over, the shocking reveal that Wilson Fisk, aka the Kingpin, was the big guy Clint was worried about all along happens, which is a rather contrived and dumb thing in itself. However, Fisk's return gets insanely worse once we consider all that has been previously achieved in Daredevil. First of all, it makes absolutely no freaking sense for Wilson Fisk to come back as the king of crime after his final showdown with Matt Murdock in the final episode of Daredevil season 3. That was supposed to be the final confrontation which saddled Daredevil's struggles with Fisk for good. It was a brutal and yet emotional scene where Daredevil saddles his victory over Kenpin, putting him in jail for the rest of his life while being loyal to his values of not killing, despite his deep hatred for him, as Wilson Fisk accepts his defeat after all his schemes and plans he had carefully and patiently executed end up failing and he is left with no other choice but to face the fact that his enemy prevailed. So for Fisk to come back after all that is simply and painfully undermining Daredevil's achievements and also character assassinating Wilson Fisk himself. Because it means that Wilson Fisk didn't really keep his word to Matt Murdock of remaining in jail for good never to return, meaning that the deal both Matt Murdock and Wilson Fisk made of not reporting Vanessa to the authorities and remaining in jail forever respectfully was for nothing, as Fisk breaks as part of the bargain anyway which not only undermines Fisk losing to Matt both physically and morally, but also undermines Fisk's love for Vanessa, given that one of the reasons why Fisk accepts his defeat and imprisonment was to prevent her from being arrested for ordering the death of Agent Adine. But if Wilson Fisk did not keep his word, then it also means that Matt Murdock didn't win. And if Matt Murdock didn't really win, as Fisk returns as the King of Crime again in Hawkeye, then it means in other words that Matt Murdock's endeavors throughout the show, and especially the ones he has to endure in Season 3 to arrest Fisk and make him pay for his crimes, which culminated in that epic and amazing ending of Daredevil Season 3, are rendered completely meaningless. Instead of Matt Murdock having his endeavors rewarded by having his worst enemy arrested for the rest of his life, thus making his city a better place, it turns out that Matt Murdock's final victory over Wilson Fisk in Season 3 is completely undermined and ruined, as Hawkeye proves that it was all basically for nothing, by having Fisk back and being a criminal once again. Because if Wilson Fisk is back and still running his criminal business, then not only did Matt Murdock lose to Fisk again, but also that justice was not served at all, when the season finale of a great amazing show finishes with the bad guy being arrested for a life to pay for his crimes, only for him to return to his criminal activities once again. Which renders the impactful ending of Daredevil Season 3 of Matt Murdock triumphing over Wilson Fisk and the two of them making a deal which saddled their fight forever, completely devoid of all sense of impact and closure it originally conveyed to Matt Murdock's struggles to take down his worst enemy. Wilson Fisk's return goes against all that has happened in the Daredevil show until its culmination back in season 3. Against everything Matt Murdock fought for and worked hard to achieve, whether as an attorney of law or as a vigilante in the dark of the night. You will go back to prison and you will live the rest of your miserable life in a cage knowing you'll never have Vanessa, that this city rejected you and beat you. I beat you! Seriously, how could anyone watch this amazing, brilliant scene of Matt defeating Fisk and have the audacity of bringing Fisk back after all that? I get that bringing an iconic villain like Fisk sounds amazing, but by bringing Fisk back, it fundamentally ruins the sense of closure that scene conveyed for Matt and Fisk's story because this is precisely what the scene conveys. That Fisk's days as a king of crime are over, after being the closest he has ever been from achieving freedom, and Matt Murdock defeated him for good, after starting the season at the lowest he has ever been. Matt's endeavors were rewarded by having his worst enemy being arrested for life after overcoming difficulties both inside and outside in order to face Fisk face to face. After that night, both Matt and Fisk will never be the same, regardless of how evil Fisk was. He was defeated by his greatest enemy and accepts his fate in prison. Hence why Fisk as a villain accepting his defeat and never leaving jail is so great and works so well as it brings a closure for their story in such a satisfying way. The title that episode, A New Napkin, wasn't just because Foggy asks for a new napkin to make a sketch of their new logo including Karen's name in it, but because it also symbolizes a new chapter in Matt's life. 
that his greatest enemy was defeated at last, and he may continue to live his life both as a lawyer and as daredevil, knowing that this chapter of his life where he struggled against Fisk is over forever. And it all gets ruined, undermined, and rendered meaningless as Fisk returns in criminal stuff again after everything they both went through in season 3. If the price to pay to bring Fisk back is to consequentially ruin all that, then it is simply not worth it. This is yet another instance of things happening for the sake of making a shocking reveal to the audience at the cost of completely ruining achievements that had been previously settled. Marvel Phase 4 has done that time and time again. But this particular instance of Fisk returning Hawkeye hits more painfully in a particular way because of how much I loved Daredevil and how amazing its story was. All the recon and undermining garbage for the sake of a show that was painfully mid so far. Fisk's death at the end of the show is yet another instance of how the stupid finale of Hawkeye undermined Daredevil and rendered its ending back in Season 3 completely meaningless. Because Wilson Fisk's fate was brutally settled not by a character we actually saw already doing that in his own show, who we could relate to and who struggles for three seasons after everything Fisk did, like having innocent people killed, threatening Matt's friends and all that while pretending to be innocent, but by this unknown character introducing the show instead. Not only wasn't it Daredevil, but Maya, a character I personally failed to sympathize with and couldn't care less about who had to put an end on Fisk by literally shooting him, but also that it rendered Matthew Murdoch's endeavors of keeping his Christian values of not killing pointless. Fisk's crimes shook Matt to his core, and he wants to kill Wilson Fisk to stop him for good, and yet his moral Christian values prevent him from doing so. This aspect of Matt Murdock is specially put on trial when he has the opportunity to kill Fisk and put an end to all that for once and for all in the final episode of Daredevil Season 3. Even Fisk himself tries to make Matt kill him, saying that he will never stop hunting down his friends Foggy and Karen, and that the only way to stop that is by killing him. All that for the sake of making Matt go against his principles, and by doing that, lose himself, even if it means for Wilson Fisk to die in the process. And yet, Matt fights against that and overcomes his desire to kill in this impactful, powerful, and beautiful scene that symbolizes Matt's ultimate victory over Fisk. Come on! Kill me! No! God knows I want you, but you don't get to destroy who I am! Fisk didn't have to be literally killed in order to be stopped. Fisk remaining alive and yet thrown in jail for good symbolized Matt's victory both in terms of physical fight and moral values. Matt achieved his dream of stopping Fisk forever and still keeping his moral values instinct. Maya killing Fisk in the end undermines that because not only did Wilson Fisk break his word to Matt that he would remain in prison at the exchange of Matt not incriminating Vanessa as he leaves prison and resumes his criminal activities altogether, but also because his fate by getting killed by Maya makes Matt's struggles and not killing him for nothing because, according to what we see in Hawkeye episode 6, he was only stopped for good by getting killed anyway. So Matt's endeavors to stop him while keeping his values unsoiled pretty much ended up being in vain. And also, the way Fisk stands awkwardly poised as he is under gunpoint by Maya makes him look ridiculous. I know she's pointing a gun at him, but compare how Fisk faced death when he tried to make Matt kill him in Daredevil to how frail he looks in Hawkeye, almost like he's about to beg for mercy or whatever. It just makes him look weak and pathetic. Wilson Fisk's return, however, wasn't the only thing wrong with his character. Wilson Fisk's resilience in Hawkeye's last episode was also truly painful to watch. He is badly hit by a car, and yet he is standing on his feet in a matter of seconds, and he also survives an explosion right underneath him. I'm aware one could argue that he is hurt after that, but still, looking explosion again. It was a pretty bad looking explosion, both in terms of CGI and damage. Fisk's body should be badly damaged right after that, so I look at him escaping from that on his own feet with skepticism. There were a handful of moments where Fisk should have either brutally beaten Kate and finished their fight for good right there or simply killed her, according to what we've seen Wilson Fisk to be capable of in dire situations like that. Sometimes she is brutally punched to the point of being tossed across the room, sometimes she is simply hurled across the room, which I think it looks pretty bad and also inconsistent. But the writers needed Kate Bishop alive and well, so here it is, this dumb anticlimactic fight scene of Kate against the Fisk himself, I guess. At some point, Yelena finally gets to have her moment of revenge with Clint to avenge her sister's death. After being brutally beaten, Clint manages to tell Yelena that Natasha used to talk to Clint about her all the time, which is simply not true. Because there was never a single moment of Natasha ever talking about her family from the Black Widow movie to anyone or any single hint that she could have done such a thing in 10 years of Marvel movies. 
In Age of Ultron, we see deep moments of Natasha, how she feels lost and that she has no place in the world while still under training at the Red Room Academy, and when she was being taken to her graduation procedure of being sterilized and how she looked terrified. Again, those are some insightful and deep moments of Natasha, what she felt and what she thought. And yet, despite being something so deep about her, not a single word or hint is ever mentioned about her family. Same with her conversation scene with Steve in Avengers Endgame, where she clearly says that she used to have nothing until she found the Avengers. I used to have nothing. And then I got this. This job. This family. I was better because of it. Which completely debunks any claims that Natasha might have had a family before them. And yet, to this scene in Hawkeye, episode 6, stating that Yelena meant so much to Natasha to the point of Natasha talking to Clan about her all the time, simply proves that the specific scene in Hawkeye season finale is yet another scene supposed to be either impactful or emotional at the cost of Redcon and 10 years of Natasha's characterization in Marvel movies. Yelena is nowhere to be seen or mentioned at the Red Room Academy flashback scene. Loki doesn't make a single mention about her family as well, despite Clint having told Loki everything about Natasha, including her dirtiest omissions she deeply regrets. And yet, the sister she is so fond of is not brought up as means of Loki using that sisterly bond to break her. Natasha also doesn't make a single mention about the family she found in Black Widow two years before the snap to Steve Rogers. She's not even sure being worried about Yelena, if she got snapped or not. Which is proven to be the case in Hawkeye episode 5, that Yelena indeed got snapped by Thanos. But in fact, everything Natasha says or does throughout 10 years of MCU leads up to the logical conclusion that she had no family before the Avengers, therefore meaning that Yelena and her parents are reconning plot devices created for the sake of this whole family theme in the Black Widow movie. And Hawkeye episode 6 makes this reconning even worse when it makes yet another statement of how relevant Yelena was to Natasha for her whole life when there are multiple moments throughout the MCU movies that simply prove otherwise. Yelena is also pretty incompetent, to say the least, whenever fighting Kate. I guess some of these moments were supposed to be funny, but for an assassin who trained her whole life since a young age to become a deadly assassin to struggle against a 22-year-old makes absolutely no sense. Regardless of how much Kate has trained for all of her life and how good she is, Kate is absolutely no match to, again, a professional deadly assassin, especially when Yelena has such urgent and personal matters to deal with, like killing Clint, which can make her even more dangerous considering her motivations behind that. She could have easily defeated Kate by knocking her unconscious ages ago, but the writers needed those funny fight scenes more, I guess. And finally, the fight scenes were really bad. We have again more instances of a girl taking down multiple men who are far stronger, heavier, and taller than her, or hordes of bad guys conveniently attacking our protagonists one at a time, giving them the precise opportunity to take them down one by one, or simply multiple men armed with fire guns, and they all simply happen to miss their target, which is simply standing still and shooting them with her bow and arrow one at a time, and yet they still couldn't hit a single bullet on her. And of course, we had the good and old trick of people with fire guns stupidly closing the distance so they can shoot, when that stupid decision of closing the distance is precisely what our hero needs to take them down. This kind of stuff is not new to Marvel, and something tells me that you're going to be surprised with the amount of people with fire guns closing the distance for no freaking reason while holding such weapons, which are very useful for precisely allowing them to take down their foes from a safe distance. Sure. Most of those fight scenes look awesome, but instead of making the hero defeat them by outsmarting them, the heroes defeat them by making their enemies dumber, and such thing was seen again in Hawkeye. So that's it for today's video, thank you for watching, and if you like my content, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time around.